So our Euthalia species green mature male has finally done the deed. <laughs> We've got a sperm web. And the next update is, yes, we've got another molt from our P. Sazame. Just look how beautiful this spider is. Absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, let's crack on with today's video. Hi, and welcome to Scott's Inverts. I'm Scott. These are the inverts. Today, we're going to have a look at a basic, basic tarantula substrate. Fingers crossed, that gets rid of our mould problems, get rid of mushrooms, that type of thing. Now, this original thing came from Luke over at Spa because I went round and visited him and all of his enclosures are like mould free, mushroom free and I was like, oh, hold on a minute, what are you doing differently that I'm not doing? Now, we all know Koya or Cocoa Horse, however you wanted to call it, kind of really aids to that mould and mushroom situation. So what is he using and what am I now going to be using and testing out across the next six months? So just before we uh, look at the soil, we've got to make sure it's environmentally friendly and sourced from an area of non-scientific interest. This is really, really important. Now it is Irish Moss Peat. Um, the brand I'm using is Clover. I'm not sponsored by them in any way. Um, I did pay for this bag, bought it through Amazon, and there are other brands available. But just to say again, it has to be environmentally friendly and harvested from areas of non-scientific interest. That's really, really important. So we're going to put the Irish moss peat to the test with this girl, our Brachypalma auratum. Mexican Fiony. The enclosure that she's going in, well, she should be in there for a, a good six, seven months till she's had like two, another two, maybe three molts. So that will give us a good testing period to see if this Irish moss peat is as good as we think it is. So this is the enclosure that we had for our snails, and they've all grown up and moved out of their home. Now, the first thing I notice with this peat moss is how light it is and soft it is really does feel like kind of if cotton wool was soil or a substrate this would be it now we're not going for no drainage layer and we're keeping this set up as basic as we can we're not adding any uh, cleanup crew at all and this is to kind of promote those conditions deep down in this soil where mold and mushrooms would normally grow where we normally see them in our enclosures to see if this Irish moss peat um, does its job really, really well. So I'm going to add about four inches of substrate to this. So we've added a couple of inches of substrate uh, for now. I just wanted to see how well it compresses down for a burrowing species. I think that might be another experiment in the future. It does compress pretty well. Now, now remember, we don't want to do the compression too much because our spider has still got to get through this substrate. But it does feel really, really nice for a substrate. Very, very soft. There is some little bits and bobs like this in there as well. Overall, it's, it's it feels pretty good. And there we go. Uh, it comes out of the bag lovely and moist. Literally... You don't have to spray this, um, especially for a brachypalma, but it does come out with a, a little bit of moisture already in it. It'd be interesting to see uh, if it dries out just as quick. And that's one of the reasons I've gone for this tank, because it's got a mesh lid, the air, it's going to evaporate pretty quickly. And then obviously with the glass size, no ventilation, we're literally encouraging any mould or mushrooms that could be in here to kind of flourish. So hopefully over the next six months, We'll either see that or we won't, and then we'll know just how good this substrate is. So we are going for an extremely basic setup. We have the hide just in there like so. Uh, dig out from underneath as well so she can go in there and hide away. And there we go. Put a bit of substrate over there, make it look a bit... That hopefully is where she's going to go. 
underneath there. And then the other thing that we're going to put in is a water dish. Try not to spill it all. Just over here in the corner. Um, I do like to go, especially when they get to kind of a small juvenile stage, I do like to go for a, a, a bit bigger water dish. It helps to increase the humidity. And again, humidity will aid any moss or any any mold, sorry, or any mushrooms that we could potentially have in here to grow. And that is going to be it. No clean up crew, no plants, because those kind of things help to keep mold and mushrooms away. And we're literally all we're going to do for maintenance is top up that water dish and remove any debris. So any any unwanted food items or any food items where she's ate a lot of it and left the last little bit, that type of thing. We're going to be throwing those away. And that's all the maintenance that we're going to do for this enclosure. Now, let's get our spider in there. And it's happened again. Another one has decided to run out onto my hand instead of the catch cup. But we don't get this opportunity very often, do we? But just look how beautiful this spider is. Girl, I am going to have to put you in your enclosure in a second. But you are just an absolute gem. Beautiful spider. I think she's going to last probably around two molts. In here. And then that's going to be her done. Go on. There we go. And a little flick of the hair just to make my fingers itch for later. <laughs> now again, just to recap, there's no moss in here. There's no live plants. And if you look down in that substrate, there is no springtails or isopods or anything like that. In the hope that we kind of create the correct conditions down here to produce mold or or any kind of fungus mushrooms that type of thing so we really are going to put this Irish moss peat to the test over the next six months and see if this girl here likes it and see if she spends more time actually on top of this hide or if she spends more time on the actual substrate itself <laughs> and just before we end the video she's having a good old drink and this is why we need to put water in every single one of our enclosures on the off chance on the chance that our spiders want to drink we have a water dish right in there waiting for them i absolutely love it when they do this boom so that is the substrate that we're going to be using um, over the course of the next six to twelve months this experiment itself is going to be six months, but I'm going to try and use it with some fossorial species, species that require different humidity levels as well, and see where we're at and see if it's as good as what we think and pray it's going to be. Anyway, anything's going to be better than coir because I am fed up of putting coir in enclosures. Even when we mix it with potting compost, we can see a little bit of mould every now and again. We see some mushrooms every now and again, all the rest of it. And if this stuff can actually just go in there and be mould free, mushroom free it is literally a spider lover's dream anyway if you've got this far and you're not subscribed hit that subscription button give this video a like if you enjoyed it and also get your notifications on so you never miss an upload and let me know down in those comments what special substrate mixes you guys use and if you experience zero mold and zero mushrooms in your enclosure now talking to the guys that don't go live planted and don't use um, what a lot of people use as terminology, don't use kind of bioactive type setups. Um, I'm talking to the people that kind of just put substrate in their enclosure, put their spider in and away we go. What I am thinking with this substrate though, is it with, bit, with it being a moss peat substrate, then hopefully, and fingers crossed, it helps to grow our moss as well as. But I guess again, we'll see, we'll find out in time. This is going to be an ongoing project. Uh, we'll see where we are in six to 12 months time. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, we shall see you again on the next one.